Next up, we have Dorma Kaba and Swisscom. We're excited to welcome to the Cloud Foundry stage for the first time Andreas Haberle, the CTO of Dorma Kaba, alongside Marcel Walker, who runs the network and cloud at Swisscom CP. I am super thrilled to have Andreas here. Sorry, Marcel, but Andreas is a, he, and I didn't learn this till recently, so this says I'm a, a really bad computer scientist, but Marcel pioneered flash memory. He was an early pioneer in the flash memory and um, in the startup world in Silicon Valley. So we have a little cross-pollination here. Um, but he started out as an analog chip designer, and he co-invented and patented multi-level flash. So we actually have a true rock star in our presence today. <laughs> uh, and he also plays piano of every day, which I promised to plug that. But I'm really excited to welcome Andreas Haberly and Marcel Walker to the stage. So good morning, everybody. As founding member and also board member of Cloud Foundry, we are really happy that you found the way to coming to Switzerland. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Abby, very much for that. We are proud that you are all here. That's great. Thanks. So you might know that uh, within our certified platform, we have uh, customers like Dorma Kaba. I'm really very happy that we have Andreas here. And he's, of course, bringing the majority of the presentation because this is really the interesting stuff we can present what is done day by day uh, uh, based on, on this platform. But we have also Swiss Re and uh, Post. And of course, as Swisscom, we use it also for us uh, to, um, to establish our uh, microservice-based uh, uh, software development. So, so the overall PaaS platform, Cloud Foundry-based, is a very, very important piece for us at Swisscom. And, uh, and that is why. I'm really happy that I can pass over now to Andreas, uh, showing what our customer does with this platform. Please welcome Andreas. Thank you, Marcel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it quite remind, reminds me a bit of the early times of flash memory, you know, late 90s, mid to uh, late 90s, when, when flash was in its infancy. And it's quite a long way for me, you know, from multi-level flash uh, invention to uh, access control as a service. Uh, but uh, you will see the story a bit. Uh, let's start. When I started, don't go back to my Silicon uh, Valley uh, adventures. I go back 14 years only. We were at Doma Cabo. We were one of the players in Europe in access control, well positioned. Now we are number two or three, depending a little bit where you set the boundaries worldwide in access control. Uh, we started off 14 years ago with some 700 million Swiss francs in revenue. Now, by organic and inorganic growth, we have 2.5 plus billion Swiss francs in revenue, 16,000 people worldwide, subsidiaries in uh, 50 country plus now. And we have a very broad offering of products. And now it gets really boring for you guys. You know, we do panic bars like over there, we do cylinders, locks, closers. Uh, but actually, it's interesting stuff, as we see in a minute. So that's the products we are doing. These are part of, of the babies I was involved heavily, you know, and they're not iPhones, you know, uh, but I love them as much as my iPhone because it's, it's, you know, I mean, you put a lot of energy to build these products and they are not even nice, they are secure. Most of them has now Bluetooth low energy that you can open with mobile phones, a lot of security stuff inside, key managing, symmetric, asymmetric, really exciting stuff, you know, this is just a surface. But as a, as a CTO, you know, it's good to have nice babies, but what really counts is being responsible for the innovation strategy of a global player is how do we differentiate now and in the future. And bad news is that other people can do as well as we do, you know. Other people can develop these nice products as well as we can do. They have nice designs, 
They are, of course, not as secure and not as whatever, you know, but, you know, the differentiation gets very hard when it comes to hardware. And uh, the differentiator we started looking at three years ago was not the product anymore. It was beyond the product, beyond the scenes, beyond where we as an engineering company were used looking at. And uh, to explain you that a bit better is that how industry works. We have, on the right part, we have an end customer. This is, in this uh, picture, is a facility manager of a school. And he has to handle a lot of, you know, keys. Mechanical keys, nowadays batches, mobile keys will come. Uh, and he's confused. So he talks to a dealer uh, because, you know, it's, it's still complex stuff. You know, we have safety, security regulations to fulfill. So he talks to a dealer to get advice what's best. The dealer has to go back to the country organization here, the Italian country organization, and finally, you know, the product is deployed or developed at the at Doma Kaba production site. And how information flows uh, goes is, I mean, look at that, you know, negotiations forced and back, you know, finally order is placed, uh, system is installed, firmware patches have to be done, but is that the way to make business in future? You know, as you as data-centric people, you know, this is not going to fly. Uh, so this is the approach, looking at how we do business now and how we business is going to be in the future is digital transformation, even for a, I would call, ironmongery company like Dorma Kaba. And the transformation happens like that. You will notice still the same stakeholders. We need security experts at the site, somebody who takes care of your installation. If somebody fails, uh, something fails, replacement keys to be done. So we cannot just virtualize everything. It's still hardware. Buildings are real. So we cannot just, you know, kick out some stakeholders. All of the stakeholders have still a, a stake in the party. But we added two more stakeholders doing that. We added the green ones. And these are sophisticated tools to plan, to order, to manage, to upgrade your installation, planning tools. And second, even the site, the building, is a stakeholder, you know? has requirements. Hey, I'm not working. My battery is low. My update has not come yet. You know, I have a security issue. So even the building becomes part of this ecosystem, which we call access control as a service. Now, these two drawings are old, you know, probably three plus year old. And uh, when you look at this drawing, I mean, for you guys, it's fairly <laughs> straightforward, you know. It has something to do, obviously, with the cloud. You know, you see the cloud there. And for us, OK, now we have to go to cloud. We really have to go to cloud. And then you start looking at, well, that's, of course, the data path, which is different. But having this data path in mind, having realized that we have to go in the cloud, a new dimension opens for a company like Dorma Kaba. You know, a lot of buzzwords come in. You have engineers talking about architecture like CQRS, highly scalable. You talk about security, you talk about what's the difference between public, semi-public, whatever, you know, a private, a virtual private, and then you really start thinking, what is your core competence in the end? We did that. And our conclusion was, we have to focus on our business. We have a lot to do to change the business model from the pipeline business to this platform business. That's our core. We know our customers, we know how revenue is generated, and we need partners. And digital transformation is a lot about partners. You have to find the right partners to do what your business demands, what your customer need. And the setup was really working fine, you know? Having Swisscom building up at the same time the application cloud using platform as, as, as a cloud foundry as a platform, having the uh, cloud foundry foundation backing up with technology, that just worked fine. To give you an idea now, we are rolling out this application. So this is not a dream anymore. We are rolling it out in Europe. I come to that in a second, how that looks like. But now we have our front-end apps are on Cloud Foundry, which is customers, partners, these different stakeholders, the different perspectives are running on Cloud Foundry. We have the front-end at the back-end is running on Cloud Foundry. A lot of ingredient stuff, business domains, identity management. You know, it's a complex system if you want to manage uh, physical uh, security. Also, the uh, IoT stack, we call it IoT stack, connecting the devices, making sure these are updated, we can download security patches, we can, we can get information, is running on Cloud Foundry. 
Well, conclusion is our business model for access control as a service is running on Cloud Foundry. We have this ecosystem built up, you know, that everybody has access, depending on his rights and views, to this, what we call, digital twin of our installation. To give you at least a glimpse, an idea, I, I will not go into any more technical detail. We split in two uh, major parts, two domains, the business domain, which connects all these, I mean, I would say more the, uh, the, uh, the real stakeholders like dealers, uh, our, our factory, uh, the country organization, stuff like that. And another domain, the IoT stack, which has some specific requirements. Uh, they consist each of quite a few applications and services and instances. We had to do because it's fairly complex to build and we want to de uh, deploy every four to six weeks. We, we deployed a little framework which we call Push to Cloud that was presented last year at the Cloud Foundry Summit in Europe that makes it easier to deploy regularly in a consistent way. You can give a look, it's available on, on, on GitHub. So that's the application we are running and that's real life now, you know? And this is exciting from this idea to transform the business in a new way. This is a medical practice. It's a medical practice here not far away. You see the team consisting of two physicians, the team assistants. Uh, the building is uh, depicted here. It has several rooms, x-ray rooms, doctor's offices, uh, a few other rooms. And the digital twin, you know, is starting when you import the floor plan. The floor plan here, which has different uh, offices, administration, has drugstore, x-ray rooms, and all of them, of course, need access control. So we can now plan, really plan in the cloud, this access control in different security zones. They're shown in different colors. We can drag and drop templates from our products. Just drag and drop. Do I want to have wireless, wired? What kind of door configuration do I want? I can configure setting the parameters all in the cloud before it's even installed, making sure it's running consistently. So this is the planning tool we give to our dealers as a tool to simplify the life of our dealer. We have then, of course, you know, everything is, this is my, my dashboard, this is my home now, you know, switching from, the, from, from, from this doctor, this is my home. Uh, here, that's my dashboard. When I look at my phone, I see everything green, everything fine, battery, no problem, firmware updates, no security issue, everything connected. But it may be that something goes wrong, you know? So these green colors turn to orange or red. And then the worst thing, the best thing is I have no idea who to call, who to contact. Here, very easy, I just tap, you know, get support, contact space, because whoever I contact here, my dealer knows exactly what problem I have. He can look from his perspective, and we can open a dialogue to fix the problem. So this is making life easy, improving the customer experience. And lastly, you know, as another, this is a real-life example. Uh, August, I got a WhatsApp message from my uh, dear daughter, Sarah. She says she went out, obviously, for jogging. My wife left. In the meantime, she is, you know, you all know that, uh, blocked with her phone only, and she writes me a WhatsApp. Uh, those who know Swiss German can translate that. Uh, she has a problem, and that's about the customer pain, which is essential for digital transformation. She has a problem, but no problem for me, you know, and this is real, you know. I can open the door remotely. I have access to my digital twin, and the problem is solved before it became more severe in this case. What's next now? Well, next we are at a starting point. This takes time, you know, to change a business from pipeline business to, to educate dealers, customers to go to cloud for their convenience takes time. So we are rolling out this product in Europe. Plan is obviously we rolled it out globally as a global player. Uh, we have different requests. We want to optimize our operating costs. We have uh, requ uh, requirements for usage-based a platform as a service offerings and you know and demand rises also when it comes to processes to security and we are slowly moving from DevOps to DevSecOps which is has its own challenges uh, as you probably know. Conclusion, takeaway from this I would say three-year journey so far with Swisscom and Cloud Foundry it's very simple. It has three components Technology is a challenge, yes, to find the way through these buzzwords and the juggle to find the right partner, that's one thing. But not to stop just using new technologies for the old way of business, but really, you know, question your own business model and to bring it sustainably to life, I tell you, that's a larger problem. And to do both at the same time, 
questioning your own business model, adopting the power of new technologies, that has a lot to do with the culture in your company. And that still remains a challenge for Doma Kappa these days, but we are ready to tackle that and bring this forward for the sake and for the convenience of our customers. With that, my short story, and uh, with that, I give it back to Marcel for some concluding words about Swisscom. Thank you very much. So you heard from Andreas that uh, they are a global organization and there, of course, latency is an issue. That's why the next step we are doing with our PaaS platform is that we are really deploying it on Amazon so that we have the chance to fulfill the customer needs also from a latency uh, um, a point. So if you're interested in that, we've done a pilot till now. Our colleagues at the booth are more than interested in showing you more details what we can offer there, not only uh, um, um, delivering um, the, the platform out of our data centers in Switzerland, but only if the customer requires it, having it, having it in a, on a global scale, uh, Amazon-based. And uh, yeah, we already heard uh, uh, in, the, in the speech before, we think it's a brilliant idea really to bring Bosch and uh, Kubernetes together, having then the both in the runtime environments from an application-based and uh, container-based. We've uh, used uh, Kubernetes for the last two years for internal services like Reddit or uh, MongoDB, and that's why we're really happy and keen to contribute to the community the know-how we've had that we can share that uh, also now bringing the Kubernetes one in that next step, Cloud Foundry based. We think this is really a huge achievement because, because uh, yeah, it is really important to have both the container one and application based one. We see that with our customers. It is not that easy to find all the business cases to, uh, to have the old applications really, to rewrite the old applications uh, into microservice based, these uh, use cases or these business cases are not always uh, running well, and that's why having now more flexibility in the runtime environment, we see this as, as a strategic next point for, uh, for Cloud Foundry. And uh, yes, we are in, in uh, we, we, the, the platform we deliver is open as a pu public platform for more or less uh, half of Europe in the western part, and we are proud now to, to, uh, to, to tell you that we, uh, beginning in November, we can open up this for additional 18 countries in Europe. So we have now really a coverage in Europe uh, with our uh, um, public platform, a public pla uh, pass platform for nearly all the countries in Europe. So. Whenever you have colleagues, other developments in other countries, please tell them that uh, the platform is now really open so that you can work with it uh, uh, from wherever you are uh, within Europe. So if you need more information, please visit our developerswisscom.com uh, page. You'll find there everything about our engagement for the platform, for Cloud Foundry idea. We really. Uh, believe in that, and uh, this is a very important piece for our strategy in the future. Thank you very much for that. Thanks. Thank you.